Hello and welcome to another episode. So we'll be doing Barter Syndrome today. A quick word of advice when you're learning urinal physiology. Always know what segment is affected of the nephron. Understand what are the normal transporters in that segment. And of course, know the normal transport processes. You understand all this and renal physiology and its applied aspect is not going to be difficult at all. Okay, so let's get right into it. So Barter syndrome affects your thick ascending limb of loop of Henle. Now we have to understand what are the normal transporters which are there in the segment. So we got the sodium potassium two chloride channels which are there. Your sodium two chloride and potassium go through this. We have the ROMK that is the renal outer medullary potassium channel. Just keep in mind apart from ROMK we also have the big K or big potassium channels which are there. So ROMK is there both in the apical as well as the basal part. And then we have the chloride channel. So specifically the chloride channel which is KB. There's another variety KA which is also there but not involved over here. Okay. And this chloride channel specifically has a subunit for its normal functioning called the BART. Okay. Now, apart from all this, we have your normal sodium potassium ATPs, which is the basolateral segment, and that essentially provides the gradient for sodium to move along. And potassium that is coming through either of this is going to go out through your ROMK. And of course, your chloride is going to come in through this and go out through the other side. Okay. Just to understand a few new varieties of Butter syndrome that have been uh, discovered, just know something called the MAGE D2. You don't have to go into depth of this. Mage D2, which kind of helps your activating the sodium potassium two chloride channels. We also have the CASR that is calcium sensing receptor. So that kind of inhibits your sodium potassium two chloride channel. So just keep these two in mind. So now coming to the different types. So Barter syndrome, initially it was discovered. Okay, but that variety which was discovered was later understood to be just one of the different varieties. Okay, so that was initially termed classical. And then we found more varieties because of a problem with this. So there are five types as of now. The first type is due to defect in this gene. So that kind of affects your sodium potassium to chloride channel. The second type affects this. So KCN, so it has to be a potassium channel. So that affects your renal outer medullary potassium channel. The third type, uh, that affects your chloride channel and specifically your KB1. The fourth variety, uh, this gene called BSND is affected. So this codes for your Barton subunit. So Barton subunit plays a role in not only your KB type of chloride channel, but also your KA variety. Okay, so all these four types that we've seen so far are autosomal recessive. Now, out of these, the first, second, and fourth one are antenatal, so they're more severe. Of course, the sodium potassium 2 chloride is the most important one. Okay, ROMK also, potassium sodium is always linked together, so that gets affected also. It's kind of severe. In the fourth variety, Barton by itself is affected. So both the Ka and Kb is affected. So as I was mentioning earlier, the first one that was discovered was in fact the childhood variety, which was termed the classical one. So that over there, only the Kb is affected. Okay, so it's not that severe. Okay, so apart from all this, what you have to understand is because of this difference between type 3 and type 4, there is no deafness in type 3. On the other hand, there is deafness in type 4. So wait, don't get confused. We're talking about the renal system, right? So you might be wondering why deafness is coming to the picture. So when you look at the sphere vascularis in your ear, okay, so that helps maintain the gradient between your perilymph, endolymph. That is important for your endocochlear potential. Okay, and that again is important for hearing. So normally, uh, over here, since KB is affected, KA can compensate. But over here, both KB and KA are affected. So that 
this is in deafness okay now in type 5 one type is x-linked recessive so remember all these are autosomal recessive x-linked recessive variety is what affects your mage d2 okay so this is uh, severe antenatal but is known to be transient okay now apart from this there is a autosomal dominant one which has been recently discovered so that affects your calcium sensing receptor so normally your calcium sensing receptor what it does is it inhibits your sodium potassium two chloride channels okay now in this autosomal dominant variety there is a gain of function mutation so the inhibition of sodium potassium two chloride channel is increased so remember in all the other varieties there is a loss of function okay only in the autosomal dominant variety there is a gain of function so if a question asked which transporters are affected in butter syndrome it can be a lot of things it can be sodium potassium to chloride channel it can be wrong k channel it can be your chloride channel Bartin itself can be affected it can be because of mage d2 or calcium sensing receptor so any of this can you know affect it so let's try to understand the clinical features next okay so this might seem a little confusing so i want you to stay with me step by step okay so in butter syndrome if any of these are affected ultimately what is going to happen that gradient which was needed for sodium to come in chloride to come in okay along with potassium so that gradient is affected whether it is rom k or this chloride channel or this by itself okay so the major problem would be your sodium and chloride which are not reabsorbed they're not reabsorbed they go out in through the urine sodium chloride is osmotically active so water is also going to come in and that results in your polyuria okay um polyuria if it's not corrected it will result in hypovolemia okay so one compensatory mechanism is increased thirst polydipsia will be there for them okay now if all this is there essentially hypovolemia and loss of sodium chloride what is the compensation your renin angiotensin mechanism is there for a long term okay so that happens in fact uh, what does notice is that this dextroglomera cells and all are hypertrophied actually okay so apart from that your aldosterone is also increased so aldosterone is increased it acts on your sodium potassium uh, atps so that is supposed to provide a gradient but since these channels are affected already no matter how much gradient is provided sodium chloride is not going to come in through this okay but your aldosterone still keeps getting hypersecreted to try to somehow create the gradient for sodium and chloride to come in so that is your secondary hyperaldosteronism okay so this secondary hyperaldosteronism is the cause for the hypokalemia which is there okay so let's come to this again you might get confused for example rom k is affected potassium is actually going out so potassium going out is affected so why is hypokalemia happening okay so if that is your argument so that is where i told you something about the big k potassium channels okay so because of this what is going to happen is increased potassium is there inside the cell okay if your uh, sodium potassium two chloride channels are affected the potassium coming in is not there potassium is lost if type 2 is there then what is seen is the compensatory overexpression of your big k potassium channels are there so this increased potassium which is that gradient that has been formed now because of the secondary hyperaldosterone will result in loss of potassium now i hope that is clear so this hypokalemia is because of the secondary hyperaldosterone also okay now apart from this in the apical segment we have your sodium and hydrogen exchanger so as i told you this is not working so it's somehow trying to 
get sodium inside. So it'll now use other transporters which are there. So one example is your sodium and hydrogen exchanger. So this gradient has been provided, but it's not able to take in sodium through this. So what it's going to do now is try to exchange sodium with hydrogen. Okay, so not hydrogen, proton. Okay, so that will result in loss of acid. Loss of acid, alkalosis. Okay, so this sodium hydrogen exchanger is what is in metabolic alkalosis. That again is because of this, this compensatory mechanism that is there. Okay, so I hope this much is clear. Now we'll come to calcium, magnesium and all that. So if you understand the renal mechanism, uh, calcium generally in the earlier parts of the nephron, paracellular root plays a more important role for absorption of your calcium. Okay, so around 80% in the earlier parts is paracellular. Then by the time it reaches DCT, it becomes 50-50 and then you know later parts will be 100% of your uh, transcellular root okay so we have the transcellular root as well as the paracellular root but in thick ascending limb this area your uh, paracellular root is more important okay later on where parathyroid hormone is acting over there your transcellular root is more important so over here already your sodium chloride is getting lost osmosis water is also gone out so this paracellular root now becomes a way for calcium and magnesium to go out. Okay, so in some varieties, not all, especially type 5, you can see type 5, the autosomal dominant one, which we are talking about. So over there and all, what we see is the loss of calcium. So hypercalciuria, hypocalcemia. Okay, also magnesium is also lost. So this kind of marks the difference between your Gittleman syndrome and your Barter syndrome. Because Gittleman syndrome affects your distal convoluted tubule. So I just told you calcium and magnesium, the difference that is there. Okay, so in magnesium, it's lost just like that. In Gittleman also. But calcium has a transcellular root over there. Okay, so calcium won't be lost in Gittleman. Okay, but magnesium is lost. Here, both calcium and magnesium are lost. So, sodium is lost, calcium is lost, magnesium is lost. Okay, so all that is going to affect your muscles. So, muscle weakness is also there. So, I hope this was clear. So, now if you take a look at all of this, you can easily explain everything. And you also understood how important transport mechanisms are now. So, polyurea, because loss of sodium and chloride and water is also coming in polydipsia because hypovolemia is there and in correction you drink more water okay so that is polydipsia also there sodium calcium magnesium everything is lost muscle weakness is there hypokalemia is because of secondary hypoaldosteronism uh, metabolic alkalosis because of secondary hypoaldosteronism some gradient is provided so sodium and your proton is exchanged hypercalciuria hypocalcemia so don't get confused with this hypercalciuria means lost in urine hypocalcemia less in blood because it's lost in urine and hypomagnesemia okay so that's all there is to barter syndrome okay so i hope this was helpful thank you